The pre-trip inspection is an essential part of a driver's daily routine. A proper vehicle inspection can go a long way in ensuring your vehicle's safe and efficient operation. Proper vehicle inspections can discover an unsafe condition before it causes an accident. Mechanical problems can be found before they become breakdowns on the road. By avoiding breakdowns, costly on-the-road repair service can be avoided. By avoiding breakdowns, you and your company will experience fewer delivery delays, meaning better customer service and more money in your wallet. In addition to the benefits to customer service, CSA violations under the Vehicle Maintenance Basic can mean costly fines to both the company and the driver. This video series is intended to be used in conjunction with your state's driver manual and other training materials in order to better prepare you, the entry-level driver, in performing the pre-trip inspection. The techniques described here are not intended to replace the enormous benefits that will come from practicing this inspection on whatever tractor and trailer you intend to drive. What we will be doing today is a demonstration of how to inspect the required items on this vehicle. When performing your daily inspection, you must remember to inspect each item individually for the criteria demonstrated in this video. It is also important to remember that there may be differences in the way your vehicle is set up. Before doing any inspection, you must be familiar with the setup of the vehicle you are about to drive. Knowing how, to, how the different parts, the air compressor, the water pump, the alternator, and the power steering pump are driven, either belt or gear, can help the driver recognize the proper way to inspect these items. Knowing where the coolant reservoir, the power steering reservoir, the oil dipstick, and oil fill are located can change a nightmarish game of hide-and-seek into an efficient and thorough pre-trip inspection. Uh, today we're going to do the engine uh, compartment part of the pre-trip inspection and uh, for the engine compartment we start by looking at an overall engine. Uh, overall we're looking for any leaks or any hoses ruptured uh, we're looking for cracks in the block or any kind of uh, leaks on the ground here that we want to spot out. So we're, we're looking at an overall condition of the engine. Then we're going to go a little bit more specific. We're going to start here at the coolant reservoir. Uh, the re coolant reservoir is mounted securely and the bolts are intact. There is a cap on it and the cap is tight. I have a sight glass here which will tell me if it's full or not. If this engine was cold, I would go ahead and get a stepladder or something like that and take this cap off and look down in it to make sure it's got coolant. I'm looking at all of the hoses that are attached to the coolant reservoir. All of them are intact. Uh, they're not cut or cracked or broken. They're not leaking. Um, and their clamps are secure. They're clamped securely. From there, I'm going to move down <clears throat> and we're going to come to the air compressor. I can find this air compressor by the braided hose or the braided line that's attached to it. I'm going to make sure that the air compressor is not leaking. It's also all of the hoses are mounted securely. All of the bolts are intact and in place and none are missing. Also, I need to say a few things about this. Uh, this is gear driven. Remember that on any system that's driven, either the air compressor or the power steering pump or the coolant uh, pump, or the water pump on the other side and the alternator, you need to kind of say how those are driven. So this is gear driven. From there we can come out and check the oil here and we could fill it here and the cap is in place. I'd want to make sure that the oil is at the proper level. And then we'll come out to our power steering reservoir. Uh, this has an opaque cover on it so I can check the fluid level here. And I'm going to make sure that it's mounted securely to the frame. The bolts are intact. It's also not leaking, and all the hoses that are attached to it are not leaking, and they're mounted securely. All of the clamps are in place. From there, we can follow our hoses around and follow those around to this system. The system here starts with the pump. The power steering pump is right back here. First thing I'm going to say about it is that it's gear driven. It's also mounted securely and not leaking. All the hoses that are attached to it are not leaking, and the bolts are in place and none are missing. 
then we come out and we'll follow another set of hoses out here to the power steering gearbox. The gearbox is not cracked, broken, it's mounted securely, all of the bolts are in place, all of these bolts are in place too, and none are missing or loose, it's not leaking. Attached to it is our steering shaft. The steering shaft can rotate freely, but it wouldn't move side to side. We'd also look at the joints here and here, the U-joints, and make sure that there isn't any kind of uh, grinding. We'd see uh, metal shavings in both of those joints if it was. From there, the best thing to do is probably come out and do our steering system. This is the steering linkage. And one thing we have to say about it is that it's held together with four castle nuts. One right here, there's one here, there's one here on the tie rod, and then there's one on the other side. We're just going to mention that one on the other side and say that each of the castle nuts are mounted securely, um, none are missing, and there's a cotter pin in place on each of the castle nuts. We're going to make sure that the bushings here are a sealed bushing and they are not cracked or leaking. We want to make sure that all the parts are straight and none are bent. Now we're going to check our suspension system. We're going to start with the spring hangers. There's one in the back, back here, and there's one in the front up here. We want to make sure that they're mounted securely to the frame and they're not broken, and that the hinges are hanging correctly and they're not bent or broken or damaged. The springs themselves are in line. They're not cracked or broken. They're also held to the axle by the U-bolts, and the U-bolts are tight and the bolts are intact. I would know if those U-bolts were loose, if there was any kind of shiny metal on the leaf springs themselves. Lastly, on the suspension system, we have a shock absorber. It's mounted correctly at the top and the bottom, and it's not leaking. The last thing I need to check on this side is going to be the brake system all the way out to the tire. And remember, I like to do that as a system. I like to go from one thing into another and end up in a place. So I'm going to start with the air lines, and they are mounted securely at both ends, not leaking. The air lines themselves are not cut or damaged or frayed or leaking. They go into my brake chamber. The brake chamber is not dented. It's also mounted securely, and the bolts are in place. And this clamp is in place and not missing. The air chamber is also not leaking. We're going to come out here and look at the push rod and the slack adjuster next. The push rod is straight, it's also not dented or bent, and it's connected to the slack adjuster with a pin and the cotter pin is in place. And with the brakes released, I shouldn't be able to pull more than one inch on this. Next we're going to come out to our brake linings. The linings are not worn dangerously thin, they're also not cracked, broken, or missing any pieces, they're mounted securely and they don't have any kind of uh, contaminants on them such as grease or oil. The grease or oil would come if I had an inner wheel seal leaking. I'm going to next check the drums. The drums are not dented or damaged, they're not excessively grooved, and they're not cracked. Sometimes we'll have a different brake system, like a disc brake system instead of a drum brake system. Most brake systems are drum brake systems, but let's see what the inspection is going to be like on a disc brake system. Well, it's going to start here with the air lines again. This is an air disc brake system. The air lines are mounted securely at both ends. They are not leaking, not cut or cracked or damaged. There still is a brake chamber here. The brake chamber is mounted securely. It is not leaking. It is also not dented, damaged, cracked, or broken. The next part of this is the caliper system on this. This has calipers and the calipers are mounted securely and they are not cracked or broken or missing any pieces. Next we're going to talk about the discs and the brake pads. The brake pads up here we have to describe those kind of like we would brake linings. We're going to say that they're not worn dangerously thin and they are also not cracked, broken, or missing any pieces. They also don't have any contaminants on them such as grease or oil. Now, the disc itself, or the rotor, is also not excessively grooved, it's not warped, it's not cracked, broken, or missing any pieces. 
that'll be the differences. You see some of the differences. There's still a lot of similarities in between these two systems, but in this system, we're talking about calipers, we're talking about brake pads, and we're talking about rotors. On a drum brake system, we're talking about linings and we're talking about brake drums. We also have slack adjusters and push rods on the drum brake system. On this one, they're all internal, so we don't have any of those kind of things. From there, I can come out and do my outer wheel seal. This has a cap on it, so I can pull the cap on that and make sure it's got fluid. It's also got bolts, and the bolts are all in place and none are missing, and this is not leaking. I'm going to come out and check the lug nuts. The lug nuts are all in place and none of them are loose. I'd know if I had a loose lug nut if I had rust trails coming off of it. Next, I'm going to check the wheel. The wheel is not cracked. It's not dented. It's also not welded. I would see cracks between the lugs here or from a lug out to one of these holes. Also on this wheel, I have a valve stem with a cap in place. I'm going to check the bead on this wheel and make sure that the bead is not um, is, the bead is intact, which brings me out to my tire. On the tires, we want to check inflation, depth, and condition, what we call IDC. Inflation is checked with an air gauge. The depth on this front tire needs to be four thirty seconds of an inch, and the condition, the overall condition of this tire is it's wearing evenly. There isn't any kind of uh, bolts or screws or nails in this tire. And also the inside wall and the outside wall are not cut or bubbled or gouged. The tread is not separating. That takes care of the left side of the engine. We have a few parts that we need to take care of on the right side. Okay, Around here on the right side of the engine, there's a few things that we can check, which are good to check, and then there are a few things that are required for your test. The things that we could check that are important to check, the fan blades. The fan blades are intact. None of them are cracked or broken or missing or hanging loose. My radiator isn't leaking. I would see coolant on it. Now the things that I have to check for the CDL. This is a serpentine belt, and there should be no deflection on the serpentine belt. The belt itself is intact. There are little grooves here on the inside, and I want to make sure that they're not chunking out or anything. And I don't see any kind of fibers to say that this uh, belt is wearing excessively. Also shouldn't be able to pull more than one half to three quarter inch on that belt. Now I'm going to check my alternator. It is belt driven. The alternator is held together with these four bolts on this model, and they are tight and in place. I also have two wires here, and I want to make sure there aren't any burn marks or any kind of arcing. Next, I'm going to follow my hoses down from the coolant reservoir to my water pump. The water pump is mounted securely, and it is gear-driven. All the hoses that are attached to it are also not leaking. The clamps are secure, and the water pump is not leaking. First of all, what we're going to do is get an overall look at the engine compartment. We're looking for any leaks. Now, we'd look at leaks on the ground, any kind of major leaks on this. We'd also look at any kind of leaking hoses. We're checking all of our hoses, making sure that none of them are cut, ruptured, leaking. All of our clamps are secure. There aren't any kind of puddles on the ground. Now, what I do on a pre-trip inspection is I like to start in an area and I like to work toward another area. I'm also going to tell you about working in systems. If you think that a vehicle has many, many different systems that you can identify parts and run in a system, it makes it easy to not miss any parts on a CDL pre-trip. Now, let's go to the highest thing that we can check, which is our coolant reservoir. There is a cap and it's in place. The coolant reservoir is mounted securely. It also isn't leaking. All of the hoses that are attached to it are clamped securely and not leaking. I have a sight glass here where I can check the level of the coolant. Moving down, the next thing that I come to if I just move down is going to be the oil. I'm going to check the oil level and make sure that it's full. I'm also going to follow a braided hose here to the air compressor. Now the air compressor has air going to it, so anything that's got air going to it or any kind of fluid going to it, it can leak. I'm going to say that it's not leaking. It's also mounted, uh, mounted securely. 
and it's gear driven. There's a gearing mechanism on the front of this engine that if some part attaches to it, we have to tell if it's driven, either belt or gear. This one is gear driven. Um, not leaking, the hose is attached securely, not dented, damaged, cracked, or broken. And then we're going to run out to the next thing that I have. This starts a system, and I'm going to call it the steering system. It's going to start with a reservoir, and it's going to end up with the steering linkage, these parts down here. But here's how we take that. Let's say we're going to take a trip through this system. The first thing we'll check is to make sure that this is full, that the fluid is its not leaking. This reservoir has a cap on it, and the cap is secure. It's mounted securely, not leaking, and full. We're going to follow this hose around to the power steering pump. Remember, if it's got fluid to it or it's got air to it, it can leak. So we're going to say that this is not leaking. It's also bolted up next to the gearing mechanism up here, so it's gear driven. It's also not dented, damaged, cracked, or broken. And we're following the hoses from it back around here to the power steering gearbox. None of the hoses are leaking. We want to make sure that we identify these hoses as clamped securely, not leaking. Now we come to the power steering gearbox. It is mounted securely. It's not dented, damaged, cracked, broken. It's not missing any pieces. All the bolts are secure. Now, if you can think for a second the way that I've described this, you can get pretty much all of the criteria for each item. If you think about if I was to take a sledgehammer to this part, or if this part was severely damaged in some kind of way, how can we describe that? Well, we can describe what it would look like if it had been drugged behind the truck for a couple of miles. It's not dented, it's not damaged, it's not cracked, it's not broken, it's not missing any pieces. You might be tempted to say that this part looks good, but good doesn't quite describe it well enough. We have to describe what good means, and that's what we use criteria for. So now that I've gone to this, this is going to be attached to the steering linkage. And the linkage is held together by four castle nuts, and there's cutter pins in place for the castle nuts. You'll notice that a castle nut kind of looks like a castle spire. It's meant to keep the keeper pin in place. Now, there are bushings here. The bushings are not leaking. They are well secured. None of the parts are dented, damaged, cracked, or broken. We're going to identify some of them, the idler arm, the control arm, and also we're going to show the pitman arm. And then the tie rod, which ties this tire to that tire on the other side. All of them are straight, not dented, damaged, cracked, or broken, and they're held together properly. Next we're going to go, and that finishes that system. This is the kind of the cool thing about this, is that we've started here, and we've gone through a system there, so we've ended up at a place, which I would say that the end place is the tie rod. And so we've started here, gone through the tie rod, haven't missed anything. Let's go to the next system. So the next system that we're going to check is going to be the suspension system. Now, whereas on the steering system we started at a place, and we went through, and we ended up in another place, the way I do the suspension system is I start out and I go in. So the first thing that we have is the spring hangers, both at the front and at the back. And we want to make sure that they are mounted securely. They're not cracked or broken. They're not missing any pieces. All of the bushings are intact. And then we're going to go to the springs next. These are our leaf springs. The leaf springs are in a line. They're not cracked, broken, or missing. And they are held to the axle with the U-bolts. The U-bolts are not cracked or broken and not loose. I could tell if I had a loose U-bolt if there was shiny metal on the springs themselves. But they're intact and not loose. And then the next thing we come to is the shock absorber, mounted at the top and the bottom securely and not leaking. The next system that we're going to check is particularly cool because we're going to go through the brake system all the way out through the tire. We're going to catch a great section of the CDL pre-trip inspection this way. So here's where we're going to start. Airlines. Airlines are connected at both ends securely, not leaking. The airline is not cut or cracked or broken, and it's connected to the brake canister. The canister is mounted securely. All the bolts are intact. It has air going to it, so it can leak. So we want to say that it's not leaking, the clamp is tight, and it's not dented, damaged, cracked, or broken, or missing any pieces. The next thing we're going to come to is the push rod. The push rod is connected to the slack adjuster, 
with the pin and there's a cotter pin in place. Both of those are in place. The push rod itself is straight. It's not dented or damaged. It's connected to the slack adjuster, like I said. The slack adjuster is also not dented, damaged. It's not cracked or broken. It's mounted securely. Now, what we have to say is to check the brake adjustment on this. We just have to say this. This remember that the CDL uh, pre-trip is testing knowledge. So what I have to be able to say is that to test the tension or to test the slack on this, I shouldn't be able to pull more than one inch. The push rod shouldn't move more than one inch. Now we're going to go all the way out. The next item that we're going to check is the brake linings, which is this right here, and the brake drum. The brake linings, we're going to have to say, are not worn dangerously thin. They also don't have any contaminants on them, such as grease or oil. We also want to check the brake linings to make sure they're not cracked, broken, they're not missing any pieces, and they're mounted securely. Next, we're going to come out to the brake drum. The brake drum is also not warped or excessively grooved. It's not cracked or broken, and it's not missing any pieces. Sometimes we'll have a different brake system, like a disc brake system instead of a drum brake system. Most brake systems are drum brake systems, but let's see what the inspection is going to be like on a disc brake system. Well, it's going to start here with the air lines again. This is an air disc brake system. The air lines are mounted securely at both ends. They are not leaking, not cut or cracked or damaged. There still is a brake chamber here. The brake chamber is mounted securely. It is not leaking. It is also not dented, damaged, cracked, or broken. The next part of this is the caliper system on this. This has calipers, and the calipers are mounted securely, and they are not cracked or broken or missing any pieces. Next, we're going to talk about the discs and the brake pads. The brake pads up here, we have to describe those kind of like we would brake linings. We're going to say that they're not worn dangerously thin, and they are also not cracked, broken, or missing any pieces. They also don't have any contaminants on them, such as grease or oil. Now, the disc itself, or the rotor, is also not excessively grooved. It's not warped. It's not cracked, broken, or missing any pieces. That'll be the differences. You see some of the differences. There's still a lot of similarities in between these two systems, but in this system, we're talking about calipers, we're talking about brake pads, and we're talking about rotors. On a drum brake system, we're talking about linings and we're talking about brake drums. We also have slack adjusters and push rods on the drum brake system. On this one, they're all internal, so we don't have any of those kind of things. So the next thing that we're gonna to come to is going to be the outer wheel seal. Outer wheel seal right here is not leaking. We could pull this cap on it and make sure that it's got fluid. Next we're going to come out to the wheel. The wheel is held on by the lug nuts. All of the lug nuts are tight. We could tell if we had a loose lug nut because there would be rust trails coming off of the lug nuts. Brings us out to the wheel. The wheel is not dented, damaged, cracked, broken, we would see cracks usually between the lugs right here or between the lugs and out to one of these holes. We're also going to check the valve stem. The valve stem is straight and not leaking and it has a cap in place. The bead of the wheel is connected to the tire. Now on the tire I like to check what I call inflation depth and condition or IDC. The inflation is checked with an air gauge. Don't say tire thumper on these because that was an old way of doing things. Right now we're going to check the inflation with an air gauge. Next is the depth. The depth on this tire is a minimum of 430 seconds because it is a steer tire. And now we'll check the overall condition of this tire. Well, it's wearing evenly. Also the inside and the outside sidewall are not cut. They're not bubbled, cracked. They're not separating. The tread is also not separating and it, is, it doesn't have any kind of uh, debris in it, such as nails or any kind of screws or bolts. That does it on this side. Now remember that we also have to check items on the right side, and there are a few things that we'll go find over there. 
Pre-trip inspection items on the right side of this. We don't have to repeat any kind of items that we've already checked. Remember, this is checking our knowledge of the pre-trip inspection. So on a daily inspection, absolutely, we'd be checking all of those things again. We'd want to check every single tire, every single wheel, every single brake, all of those kind of things on a daily inspection. But right now we have to tell what we know. So let's move back into the engine compartment and let's catch a few items over here. This is a serpentine belt, so we're going to check this belt for no measurable deflection. We're also going to see that it's not frayed, cracked, chunked out, or, uh, or threading. It's attached to the alternator, which is belt driven. Got four bolts. The bolts are intact. We don't see any arcing on any of the leads. It doesn't look like this is dented, damaged, cracked. There's no kind of uh, burn marks or anything on the alternator. So, next while we're in this area, let's drop down because the next thing is we're going to follow this hose down from the coolant reservoir to the water pump. The water pump sits right down in here and it has water to it, so we're going to make sure it's not leaking. But now what we see here is that it is belt driven and here's the belt for it. The belt driven water pump, there's no measurable deflection on this belt. The belt is also not cut, it's not frayed, and it's not threading. The water pump itself is not cracked, broken, it's not missing any pieces, and it's not leaking. I think I already mentioned that. The last thing we're going to pick up over here is going to be that the fan is not loose and that all of the blades on the fan are not cracked and they're not broken or coming loose. The tractor and 